On first viewing, I didn't seem to understand 500 Days of Summer. I didn't resonate with it. I just, it didn't, it didn't connect and I kind of left it as a film I didn't really understand or really quite enjoy. But then a few years later I went back to it and I watched it again. And I found myself in a puddle of my own tears. So clearly something clicked. And ever since, I've not been able to stop watching it. Every time I see it, there's something new to look at, there's something different to analyse. And before I get going, I should probably put out a spoiler warning because I'm talking about a film. So if you haven't seen it, recommend you go watch it. Don't have to, don't have to listen to me, but it's a good watch. And don't worry if you don't like it at first. I know a lot of people who don't like this film and that's fine. It took me a couple of viewings, but yeah, go give it a watch. <laughs> I've never talked about an actual film on this channel, so as a film student, I'm appalled at myself. So yes, I didn't resonate with it at first. It was quite foreign. I think because when I first watched it, I had never been in any sort of relationship. I had never kind of experienced love of any kind, da 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 da. I don't think I, I found, I understood what was at the root of the film. And maybe even now I don't quite understand it to its fullest extent because I haven't had my heart majorly broken. But in my mind, this film is a semi-perfect rom-com. And that's a very big statement for someone who prides herself in just really loving rom-coms as a film student. So not even just as fluffy material, but as something that I want to make one day. <laughs> yes, my, my dream is to make the perfect rom-com. Don't look at me like that. It's artistically different. So it's shot differently. They have different aspect ratios. You open on kind of like old film stock. There's the famous scene with the two shots that kind of differ like I kind of did at the beginning. I tried to copy it. There are so many metaphors hidden under the film. The fact that for a film about love, the colour red is only seen twice. Once on a toothbrush in Tom's bathroom and once as a red paper crane in Summer's bedroom. That's the only time you see red in the film because blue is used as Summer's colour. So Tom sees love as blue because it's Summer's colour, even though blue is typically a sad colour, which kind of all works its way back around because Summer ends up making, breaking his heart. It's just... It's just packed full of metaphors, okay? It's packed full of metaphors. And I love it because every time you watch it, you get something else out of it. It's just I like it a lot. Just, just really like it. I like it a lot. Ah! I'm actually here to talk about why I made this shitty painting. I understand, I'm not a painter. In fact, okay, so sidetrack. Yesterday, I went to office works. I browsed the aisles, walked into the canvas aisle. I don't paint. I found myself clutching a thing of teal paint because my favourite colour is teal and apparently I'm helpless when it comes to teal things. I spent $30 on things that I'm not a painter. And then I remembered something I saw a little while ago. Now back to the original story, there's a scene in the film where Tom draws buildings on Summer's arm to represent how he would have designed the downtown LA skyline. And I was doing a bit of googling about 500 days of summer related or inspired tattoos and of course there are a bunch of buildings. And then I saw this young woman who had uh, that in black, uh, brackets with a one in it on her wrist. And that really caught my eye. Obviously the main motif in the film is how every day is a different kind of day in their relationship. It ticks past, there are good days, there are bad days. And when it ends with summer and he meets autumn, it ticks back down to one. And that really struck with me because anything in your life could be the day one of something big. And that is so, I love, I love it because it's so true. Every little insignificant moment in your life could be the day one of something big. And if it doesn't pan out, your life will tick back down to number one and you can start again. You don't have to dwell on things that don't work out. And that, oh, I love it so much. So hence why I've, yeah. So this is now part of my life. I'm probably gonna hang it somewhere in my place. But it's a nice little reminder that anything can be day one of something and you never know what that day one is gonna be. <laughs>